in listen only mode. All right, guys, I want to welcome everybody to another KevCam night class here. Um, tonight we'll be covering probing. Um, we'll let a couple people uh, get filed in here, but uh, we have Brendan McKenna helping us out tonight, and actually got Greg Shields, uh, one of our post writers, and uh, knows a lot about the probing side of things too. So um, if you guys have any questions at all, definitely let us know right away. Well, you know, Kevin, I think it's kind of an understatement to uh, <laughs> to say that, that Greg knows a little bit about uh Oh, yeah, probing. I should say a little no, bit. No, 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 and I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> no, it's, no, I mean, it's it's really funny. You know, Greg and I, you know, we go back quite a ways. Uh, you know, we've been working together for a long time. And, and uh, I, you know, i got to be honest, I'm not sure if that there's anybody that, that I know personally who knows more about uh, probing and, and how to really make that uh, super effective. So... You know, it's 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 awesome that that uh, Greg is here. And and Greg, I don't mean to set the bar so high, but uh, you know, just yeah, you're gonna really make me work for it. No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, for those of you guys that are new to the uh, the night school, um, right now everybody is on mute, um, and that's just to reduce the background noise. Um, if you guys have any questions, there is a questions pane in the GoToWebinar. Um, definitely ask away as much as you can, and then uh, Greg or Brendan will try to address those as soon as they come through, and if not, um, we'll probably just, uh, uh, Brendan will tell me to shut up, and we'll address them right then and there so we can get your guys' <laughs> questions answered for you guys. So um, we want to make this as learning, you know, or, you know, make this for you guys as much as possible. So, you know, definitely don't hesitate to ask questions, and, uh, you know, if there's something you want to see, just let us know. So. Um, but with that being said, uh, bring this over here. You guys have any ideas that you guys want to see in the night class? Definitely uh, shoot them over to me in an email. Um, what I will do here is let me copy. I'm gonna get my email address in here for you guys. So I just put my email address into the GoToMeeting chat section. Um, all of you guys should be able to see it, and in there. And uh, now after tonight is done, these will all the we're recording that right now, and this will be all uploaded to YouTube, um, and we do have a channel for it. So if you guys want, you guys can search for Solid Cam University. Um, you guys can type in KevCam, um, whatever you guys want, and I'll also put the uh, link to the channel in the chat section too. So um, for those of you guys that are new, um, there are the old night classes that we've done in here. I've added tips and tricks. Um, I think I just added about 15 new videos in the last week of kind of things inside solid cam um so definitely check that out and uh you know if you guys are like I said wanting to see an older version of the the night class uh definitely come back through here so but i uh, got some more people piling in here i uh, just want to make sure can everybody see my screen right now if someone just says yes or no or yeah, you know, I I can see it perfectly here. Can um, can oh my god, it's so funny. <laughs> oh, <I'm not> <laughs> I know, you know, I'm, I just god, I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with me. Old habits die hard, eh, Brennan? They they do, <laughs> they do. <laughs> All right, looks like we got people saying yes. So let's get the ball rolling here. Okay, so um, we're gonna be kind of going over some tips and tricks with the probe in here, and kind of showing you guys how the probe operates, and you know, kind of how it can save you guys time too. Um, so I'm just got a pretty general basic part here, um, and what we're going to do is the probing will actually can do many things for you guys. Um, you know, for on this particular part, what we're going to do is we're going to find our X, Y, and Z uh, position here, um, and you guys can set this up right in your operation. So uh, just bring it in just as you guys normally do, and then do a right click and just add a probe operation. Now. What we want to do is, being since our coordinate system is right in the center of our part, um, we want to, you know, probe it so we do basically like an island. So I'll come over here and do our boss. And all they have to do is just throw a quick chain around the outside here, hit our green checkbox, and I have the option to do a home position, so X, Y, Z for my coordinate system, or I can do a measurement. Um, for this first initial one, we're just going to do a couple home positions. And then uh, we'll get some into some more complex parts for you guys and show you the measurement feature also. So I'll come in here. I'm just going to grab my 
Renshaw probe. And levels, we really don't ever have to touch. Technology, um, not much in there. The, the tech one is where we're going to get into the guts of everything. So right here, um, if I click the little show button, you'll see that I'm actually taking my hits right now and where it's taking its hits. Um, so now I'm not only probing up my X direction right now. So what I want to do is do my X and Y. So I can come over here, grab my X and Y. Now the really neat thing about this is you'll see that we're actually going too deep right now. Let me just turn off that probe. We're actually going too deep right here. We're actually going below the part. So if I just um, put my mouse cursor over here and I can, if you hit the little track ball on your mouse, you can actually move this up and down. Um, that kind of works for all of these screens up here. So if you guys want, you guys can in increase the retract distance. So it's really nice, really e you know, user friendly for you guys, and it's really easy to use. Um, so basically, by just doing that right there, we've probed the part. Uh, maybe I want to go up just a little bit higher, so I can just click on my Z level, just move it up a little bit higher, and now I just found my X and Y for that center of that part. I can just do a save and calculate. Um, if you guys want, you guys can actually see it here too. And we'll just slow it down. And it found our exact center. So real easy to use for the home positioning. And then this will write back to your G54 uh, in your post. Or I'm sorry, not in your post, in your uh, work offsets on your machine. Um, so we got your, our X and Y. Now we just need to do our Z. So what we can do is we can start a new probe operation, um, or we can just make a copy of what we've done already. And then we're just going to do Z hit. And I can pick anywhere on here that I want. So I can just basically click. Uh, or if you want a specific position in there, what you guys can do is you guys can also do like a, a sketch point. Let me just cancel out of here. And maybe we just want to hit in an exact spot. So I'm just going to do a sketch point right there. OK, so now change this over to my Z hit. And now I can click on that exact point, and you guys can obviously dimension that um, to avoid a fixture or uh, tooling or, or something that's in the way for you guys. So um, hit the green check mark. We got our Z level. Um, basically, just taking a nice Z hit. Um, not really much to do on the Z hit because we're just, um, you know, basically getting a home position for that uh, the top of the part. Um, but you can change the levels right here. You can also change the retract, um, like we were talking before. And then you just take that center mouse uh, trackball and just scroll up or down, and that's going to get you what you're looking for. So now, if we go to actually run this part in the machine, do a solid verify here. Taking our hits, and then it's going to come do its 1Z hit. And we just wrote to the G54 work offset and now we can start doing our regular programming in here coming in here and do you know a pocket um, profile or, or whatever you guys are looking for so it really makes it easy um, you know it's going to save a lot of time just you know on the machine so you guys aren't having to hand program that probe in there um, unfortunately this isn't doesn't isn't going to work for the guys that use edge finders um, so you guys will have to have a probe in your machine um, to do this stuff but uh, it's going to save you guys a lot of setup time too, since you guys can basically come in here, get your probing all set where you want your X, Y, Z to take its hits, write everything back, and then you guys are all good to go. Do we have you know, any? And oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to say real quick, you know, for for the people who are here in attendance, um, you know, it, it's uh, it's pretty, and and Greg might be able to kind of chime in on this. But I think it's pretty fair to say that a lot of the uh, this probing functionality is becoming more and more prevalent, especially on newer machines, and in particular like Haas. Uh, you know, they they have a lot of you know the probing routines, and you know this can really be so effective in terms of just saving so much time. And and uh, Greg, can you just kind of speak to that maybe just real quick? I mean, um, I think more and more people who are who are buying Haas machines, um, you know, generally pick up the probing um, option. Yeah, we're we're seeing a, a, an uptick in the interest on the probe just because of the fact. A lot of the times we'll get guys that'll be like, "Well, yeah, I have the probe and I can do all that stuff manually." Yes, you can. You can do it manually, 
but when it comes time to set multiple fixtures or you have probe or part specific probing, then you do have to do it manually every time you start that job up. Like if you're going to go and pick up yep. different fixture offsets or maybe the part's going to be off a little bit. These are this way you can pre stack the program with your probing routines and you don't have to do that manually. You hit the cycle start button at the beginning and, and it depends on kind of how you set up your shop. If you have, you know, operators that program the machines or you just have operators that push the buttons, that's where a lot of this, it, it's taken away from the operator on the floor because all he has to do is put the part in the machine, push the button, and all the probing routines run themselves. It sets the work offset and away they go. We can do this stuff, you know, lights out as well. You know, if you had a robotic arm that was loading the loading the parts, we can set it up so it's everything is done automatically. So we're taking that ability to do this manual, you know, these these probing routines exist, all exist in the Renishaw software. We're just driving them inside of our software and allowing you to do different things with them. Excellent. Yeah, yeah I don't great know if that answers answer your question. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. No, it's and, and that's okay. perfect because, you know, again it's just you know, I, I think the 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 kind of the classic assumption really is, well, I you know, a probe, I have to kind of run it on my own. I have to do all manual input anyway. And, you know, that's not necessarily true. You know, we can do a lot of that for you if it's programmed the right way. So um, no, I appreciate that input, Greg. That's perfect. Yeah, so, and I mean, um, the ease of use inside the SolidCam probe software, I mean, you guys just seen, you know, we basically just found our home position by two operations and, you know, maybe five or six mouse clicks versus, you know, having to hand edit uh, some code that you guys might have saved or, you know, changing locations or, you know, getting the caliper out and measuring, you know, how big is my stock on the machine, you know, how far are we shifted over to the one way. Um, like I said, SolidCam is going to take all that guesswork out for you guys and all that time. So, Brendan, you're going to get a lot of time savings just on the machine itself. So. Hey, uh, and uh, Ken, just, uh, Ken, oh my God, I, I did it twice. That's incredible. Oh my God. Well, you know, for those of you who uh, have seen some of these webinars, I work very closely with a guy named Ken. So Ken and Kevin, it, it's just, uh, it's like a Freudian slip. I apologize there. Yeah, but like an hour in the jar there, Brian, <laughs> so far. I know, you know, Kevin's going to feel unloved here. So. <laughs> Um, um, there is a question that popped up, and uh, it says, and I was just uh, can you use yeah, that's what I was just going to ask you there, Greg. Yeah. Okay. Can you use the probe as a CMM? The, our, our probing software is not designed to use to be used as a replacement for a CMM. Now, what that means to you and as an operator or as a programmer is the fact of doing in-process inspection. Um, you can go through, there's two methods to use the probe. The first would be to set the work offsets, and then the second would be to do the measurement functions. And Kevin's going to get into that a little bit later as far as that goes. But you can do part qualification and measuring while the part is still in the machine. The, and to clarify that just a little bit more, the CMMs have a larger breadth of functionality in them than we offer currently. So we're not trying to say, hey, buy our pro product and it'll replace your, you know, three CMMs. Uh, this is a basic probing library that will get you through on machine inspections for your parts. And as we go through this, I'll try to qualify that a little bit more as to some of the things we can and can't do. I mean, there's a lot of power here as far as what you want to do with the probe. And we're just going to touch on that a little bit. A lot of the things you can do with Probe, we're finding that well, without rambling on about a lot of different things here, there, there's a lot of functionality that we can do, but you also have to know how you want to handle that. What are we going to do with these measurements? Are we going to do some variable programming? You kind of have to have a good grasp on all of the functions that you can use in this. And you can get very close to doing some of this stuff, you know, the same things that you're going to do on a CMM, but it is not a replacement. So we want to make sure that is very clear. Perfect. Okay. All right. 
do we have any other questions so far that are coming up or that you guys are wondering about? I don't see anything coming up, so okay, we'll get into a little bit more complex stuff here. So now what we're going to do is kind of go over a pretty basic part here and um, kind of, like Greg was saying, qualify this part. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different strategies of what the probe can do um, and, you know, how it can kind of benefit you guys here. So right now we're going to do an external corner. Um, if I hit my drop down, for those of you guys that don't have probe, you guys have a lot of different options in here of what you guys want to probe. Um, so external corner is going to be our bottom one right here. Um, all they have to do is just throw a quick little chain, you know, around uh, where I want to probe. Now, if I go to my, I mean, obviously we have to grab our, our tool here uh, using that same Renshaw probe. Now you'll see on my levels, and let me just do the show here. We're actually coming over here. Get this part over. Oops, this baseball is a little touchy. Okay, we're gonna get our part here, but let's say we just want to space it out a little bit. So, like before, we can just kind of um, change our distance up so it goes a little bit farther in to maybe avoid some. Um, same thing down here. We can kind of increase that so we can kind of we can get our homing position right there on that corner, um, especially being since there's a radius right there, which, you know, it's going to be, you know, you're going off that theoretical point. If you're using the edge finder, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but it can be done. Um, but like I said, the probe's going to take its hits right here or come down, move over, take its hits, come over, take its hits. Now, as soon as the probe hits this level right here, it's going to go into the safety mode. So if anything touches that probe along that path, it's automatically going to stop. It's not going to keep going and snap your probe off or your stylus off. So, um, you know, definitely keep that in mind. And all those safety measures are, you know, built in with the post right here. So um, now if you guys want, you guys can add, uh, you know, um, you know, change up your levels a little bit. You guys can, like I said, change your retract so you can have a little bit farther retract in one direction or a little bit smaller one just to avoid clamps um, or anything that's in the way. So that's kind of how to do a, an external corner. Uh, like I said, really easy to use. And you know, the only thing you guys are really having to do is just do a, a quick little chain, grab your tool, and then just come to your technology and just show what you're doing here. And you can see where that probe is coming down and taking its hits. All right, so now when we get into measuring holes or we can do home position off a hole. So what we're doing right here is basically just having to chain that circle. Um, got our tool already in there. Come down to our, our tech here and let's turn on. And you can see that like right now, we're not going deep enough. So we can come into our Z level and let's just get it so it's right in the center. Um, and if you guys aren't sure, you guys can definitely just click on the pointer and you guys can just click uh, where you want that Z level to be and it will adjust for that too. Um, so get that and now you guys can change the number of steps or number of touch points you want for that circle. Um, and this is the same for radius and so we can do, you know, all the way up to 10, um, you know, it gets quite a bit in there, but you guys, if you guys want to get a, the real accurate measurement, um, you guys can add more touch points in there as you wish. So in the parameter list, and this is kind of what Greg was talking about, um, like on, let's, we're just going to pretend you guys are running the, like a Haas machine right now. Um, you guys can get the, if you guys want to do a measurement, you guys can do get the X location, uh, the Y location on there, um, and it will pop it out into the, um, is it the extended macros in the uh, it's in the parameters uh, or in the parameters? Sorry. Yeah, those numbers are indicative of a memory location in the Haas machine or it, basically any machine, Fanuc, um, Heidenhain, Siemens, any of these. There's there's a pre-located location in the memory that allows you to write this information into that location for use at a later point. Um, just one of the things that with the probe you have to understand that each time the probe is triggered in each of these operations, certain memory locations are populated. And there's usually, it's, a, it's a range of between seven and nine memory locations are, variables would be written, or the results are gonna be written into these memory locations. 
out. Okay, this happens behind the scenes. When you're doing your work offset locations, the that information is written into the G5455 locations. When you go to measurement, you're taking data with the probe. Now what we with these parameters that are in here, we're saying, okay, when the probe is triggered, I want to take the X and Y locations and I want to write them to a higher location in the memory so the next time the probe is triggered, these don't get overwritten because each time the probe is triggered, that section of seven and nine variables is wiped out with new information. So we lay this stuff out and because you're doing measurement, we're taking this information and we're either going to, well, there's two schools of thought behind this. Either we can take that measurement at that given point and drop it out through a parallel port to a printer that writes an in-process report as these measurements are taken or we can store them in the control in these parameter locations so you can, like in the Haas, you can page through the parameters and go to parameter 121 and look at that live data from the probe and then make a decision based on that information. Okay, you know, I went out and I probed this boss that X location is critical. Is it within spec or if it's not? Before you loosen up clamps, before you take the part out of the machine and then all of a sudden it's got to go back to rework, we all know how difficult that is to go back and you know take a thousands off of something because it's out of spec. So this gives you the ability to do, with the probing, the in-process inspection while everything is in the machine, while the part is warm, you know, it's still being machined, nothing's changed, you don't. You can go back and make a recut and have a deg better degree of accuracy because you're in the moment when that was machined. It's not later. You don't have to refixture, and that leads to more productivity because you're not going back and recutting this thing. You know, it doesn't have to go through inspection, and you're qualifying it while it's on the machine. Yeah, and you know, two guys. So that we're showing a whole slew of different. Um, you know, probing technologies in here, but you know, when you guys, you know, actually use probe on your machine, you guys might just have, you know, one of these just to spec out maybe a tight tolerance hole or, you know, a boss that's sticking up for a tighter tolerance. So you're not going to have all these in a, in a huge long list here and having to go through and wipe your memory every time. Does that make right. sense? Correct. So perfect. Thank you. Okay. So, that's, uh, and right here in our, um, you know, like I was saying, you guys can do multiple touch points um, up to 10. Um, this one, like we had default to three, um, you know, with your levels. Let me kind of zoom in here to get my, my Z level set up here. Looks good right there. Um, and then you're, you're done. Um, and like we we're saying, you guys can use this as a home position point, or you guys can actually use this as a measurement. Um, it's totally up to what you guys want to do. Um, so it's, the probing is going to save you guys, what we're kind of getting at is going to save you guys a lot of time. All right, so let's uh, exit out of here. And let's hey, go. Kev, Kevin, hey, real what? quick, before you start on one more thing, could you just, you were talking about protected move positioning. Could you just pop open one of those and post it out? You I just want to make a point. Okay, if you, I'm not going to get into G-code, but this is the, these are the actual codes that would appear in your G-code program not a separate program. It works. The probing library is integrated into your post processor that you already have. It's, it doesn't mess with anything with, you know, if you've spent a lot of time with your post, the integration is very easy. We put this out and these are back, basically calls to the internal macros that your machine's going to have it from Renishaw. And what I wanted to touch on real quickly is this G68 um, P9810. If you look at all of the moves that this thing is going to make, it's all in that protected mode positioning, which means, and what Kevin was alluding to earlier, is the fact that it is protected. You're not going to snap a probe off when you're in this. Any moves that we make within the probing functions inside a solid cam are in protected mode. It's a high feed rate, but if that probe triggers on any one thing, runs across the clamp, if, you know, material that you didn't see, it's not going to snap the probe off. It's going to stop, stop the machine right away. It's not fast enough, you know, so in the early days of probe, that was a big thing. People were, sna you know, snapping probes because they would wrap it across the part and forget about something, and probes, 
probe styluses were very expensive. Probe heads are still relatively expensive. So we're moving everything inside of that protected mode. So I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, and what will actually happen <laughs> is uh, you'll get an error on your machine. It'll say, uh, um, oh, I'm trying to think right now, um, interference alarm or something like that will actually pop up on your right. controller um, telling you that something something went wrong. And you'll, you'll see where, right where the probe hit. So. And, you know, Greg, just to add to that, if I may, um, you know, that's, that's all standard functionality in, in, uh, in the probe package, correct? Correct. Yes, we that that's all standard. Nothing that we're doing inside is outside of that protected mode. Sure. So okay. Just for that Excellent. reason. Great. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll get into um, doing a boss. So right here um, we have a couple different bosses to, for you guys to see. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually just probe the location of this boss right here. And I think we're just going to do the X location of that boss. Yep. So right here, we're just doing the X location. Just do a show, um, you know, and get used to just turning that on because it's really nice to see, you know, where your probe and you know where your probe is actually running and moving to. So um, right here, you can see coming down, just taking uh, two hits, and that's kind of how your probe works. It comes in and takes a fast hit, and gets the you know somewhat close. And then it comes back and takes one really nice soft hit to get that real accurate measurement. Um, and that's all built in to your guys' probe, too. So it's nothing that you guys have to add in there. Um, but like I said, we can come in here and you can check the, you know, the, the location, the size. Um, you know, if something is, you know, too far undersize, it will alarm out. Um, so that kind of... And what we can do, and it's not really much of the probing software, and I don't know if I should really say too much here, but you know, if you guys are doing verification and you guys uh, machine this boss and maybe a real hard material, but as it gets wore down, um, you know, you guys have to increase the tool comp. That can be added in there. It's going to be more programming, you know, kind of on your side as a subroutine, but um, I don't want to get too deep in there, but it can be done um, for you guys. So. Like I said, if you guys are running mass quantities, um, you guys need to check every part. That can be added in there too. So um, that's kind of how doing doing boss right there. If you guys want to, you guys can also like do like I said X and Y, and actually find you know where the center of that that boss is going to be also. So um, that is probing the square boss in the X. Um, basically kind of doing the same thing in Y right here. And if I just open up, it's going to be the same chain, but the only thing different is we just switched, instead of measuring along X, we went along Y. Um, so changing those variables right there. If you guys want to see it, you guys can just turn on the little show button and you can see where that probe is coming in for you guys. Okay, so now we can do a boss with three points. Um, and basically kind of doing basically the same thing as that circle. Uh, over here, um, so if we go along our technology here, um, you can see that we do our touch points. Um, right now we have three. Looks like we actually might be going a little bit too much on the the uh, retract, so we can actually tighten that up or make it a little bit smaller there. So we're coming down, and we're not we're we're you know for surely not going to hit that center boss, and we're just going to probe that outside. Um, circle and you'll see it right here hole with boss and it, you know it gives you a good diagram of what's going on so it knows to avoid that boss it just doesn't come straight down and then move out like a typical you know uh, hole would um, so we kind of added all those features in there for you guys to make this as easy as possible um, and like I said all we're, we're really doing is if I just show you the chain real quick here See where we go on here. Chain that circle. And that's it. So we grabbed our chain and you know we got our probe points. Now our Z level got um, changed up a little bit just because uh, I picked new geometry, but we can easily just come in here and you know move that down a little bit. Save and calculate. And let's just do a g-code right here you can see we're turning our probe on and basically probing a, a web is um, 
you know, kind of what the the probe cycle is there for you. So, and this will again, um, you guys can use this as a measurement, or you guys can use this as a uh, home position for you guys. So G fifty four, fifty five, and so on. Hey, Kevin, one of the things sure. that uh, you know, we we were talking about um, with the home position setting, and uh, I should have. Uh, I had an example for this, but I can't do it right, right now. Is that if you let's just say you had multiple datums on this part, or I wanted to do multiple setups. You know, we were talking about the fact of, you know, why would you do this stuff when you could do it manually? When you have multiple setups on a single part, you can program in all of those datum points because some of the datum points you may need will be child features of your initial program. You're going to set up Mac one, set a corner and start machining, and then let's just say you have a datum that is a, a product of one of the machining operations that you do based on Mac 1, you can do the, you can go over, you know, you would create your Mac 2 in the software and then create your probing operation. Like, what I usually do is I'll set Mac 1 on the corner of this part, and then I'll machine that boss on the far right, and then use a probing routine to pick it up and use that as my origin for Mac 2, which would be my second setup. And that boss was a child of Mac 1. So any anytime you're doing progressive datum setups on a single part where you're going to, you know, reset your machine reference off of those new datums, this avoids you having to do this manually because then it's all based on the program. And the probing, you can... There's really no examples in this part, but I mean, you can mix and match machining operations in between all of these probe operations. Absolutely. You can do probing, you can do machining, you can do probing, you can do machining, and they don't have to be dependent or they can be dependent. You can, there's a lot of flexibility there as far as the home position measurements and setting datums. Absolutely, yeah. Like I said, we're trying to get, get as much time savings for you guys, so. All right, so we can do this the same boss with four points. Um, basically, just kind of you know adding more points on that uh, the technology section of number of touch points. So you know if we wanted to move it up to seven, um, we just do a show right here. You can see all your your touch points going on right there. Z level set, and then you're done. So um, you know real easy for you guys to use. Now let's get with our pocket here. Now what we're doing is we're taking a measurement to, to check the width of this pocket right here. Um, and basically switch it over to measurement right here. Um, we can chain our geometry, hit the green check mark. We got our tool in there. Come over to our tech one um, and let's just do a show. Kind of get this out of the way over here a little bit for you guys and basically just doing a simple measurement. Um, adjust our Z level a little bit. And like I said, if you, if you guys don't want to use the trackball, you can definitely just come in here and click and it's going to pick up those uh, the, those levels just like when you guys are milling. So um, just doing a simple uh, pocket with a boss in there so it knows to retract up and go over that boss and doesn't come you know straight through, kind of like how the, the web does. Um, and that's it. I mean, there's not much in here, guys, for the probing. Uh, Try to keep it as simple as easy for you guys, um, just because we know it's you know probing. Like Greg was saying back in the day, it was huge. Um, you know, if you made one mess up at all, um, you're paying quite a bit of money for that stylus. Plus, having the time to re-indicate that stylus back in to get it verified with the machine and all that stuff, it took a little bit of time and lots of work. And um, with the probing inside SolidCam, this is you're seeing it all live for you guys. Um, so it's real nice to, you know, play it through. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I'll bring up another part and we'll actually play it through and machine sim for you guys. So um, those of you guys are running, you know, some, you know, four or five X machines using that probing, um, you know, we can bring that in with the machine sim too. All right. And we can do the same thing, you know, X or we can do a Y measurement. Um, on that and get our, our measurement in there also. You know, and, and again, Kevin, I, I just wanted to say real quick, um, you know, this is, this is really supremely important, especially when you're able to verify it here. 
you know, especially through machine sim. And, and I know that you know, it's a different subject um, that we've already covered, but again, if, if there's anything during the probing cycle or the machine sim, you know, you always want to see it here. If it's problematic here, you know, you definitely don't want to hit that cycle start button on your machine. So, um, you know, that's a really great point that you made, you know, going through and just kind of, you know, just walking it through and just making sure that, that all the, you know, that all the parameters are correct. And, and uh, you know, granted, I mean, you know, machine sim, is, it, it can't detect, uh, you know, a bad tool length offset or a bad fixture offset. However, uh, you know, if everything is set up correctly on the machine, you'll see a lot of that here. Uh, you know, before you, you know, again, you know, before you snap off the stylus or, you know, any of that sort of stuff. So that's a that's a really good point. Well, it's just like the good old days, like when Brendan was back in the machine shop. They didn't have cam software, so they had to hand program everything. And <laughs> oh God! And you had to actually, <laughs> <laughs> you know, verify everything on the machine. And now, hey. you know, we've come up with the cam software. <laughs> just and, just because I used to learn, uh, just because I used to knew, know Genesis, I mean, you know, <laughs> give me give me a break here, Kevin. Come on, a little bit, just a yeah. little. So now we're now we're taking the probing technology to the 21st century here too. So, um, you know, we're, we're not we're camming and probing all at the same time. So, <laughs> had to throw that jab in there for a little. Bit. No, that's great. No, I appreciate that. It makes me. I'm going to sleep much better tonight. I, I, <laughs> As long as you're in your your breathing machine, right? <laughs> oh, jeez. No, that's no, that's Ken and Sean. That's Ken and Sean. I, I don't have to do that. <laughs> all right, guys. Do we I'm have not that old? <laughs> any questions on this part at all so far? Before we move on to another part. All right. I think we just saw something come in here. Um, yeah. So I can use probing and then save the result into a buffer and decrement from bore size and make a compensation for the milling tool and recut, correct? Hold on. How did the probe program know the position of the part on the machine? Do I need to prove this? Yeah, you would have to set, when you, when you would put a part on the machine, you have to rough set a G54 and then let the probe come in and fine tune it. You can't just put the part anywhere on the machine and have the probe thinking that it's somewhere and have it go out and find it. No, you yeah. it, you got to kind of rough set that. You know, you dial the machine over to kind of where you think the edge of the part is, and you go G54 set set part. I think yeah, set part is the set part on the haws. Yeah, set part zero is on the haws, and then. You hit cycle start, and the probe comes over and goes, "Oh, okay, yeah, I'll find it." Yeah, so, so basically, you gotta like, do it rough. What you guys will do is you'll just do a quick jog down of your machine, just get a, a rough estimate of where it would be. And like Greg said, hit that part zero um, for your your G54 or 55, whatever you're using, and then hit cycle start, and then it will take from there, and then it'll come down and do the real accurate movements for you guys. And then the other part of that, so. I'm not sure what the decrement from the bore size is. What we can, there's two aspects of that. Now, if you're talking about measuring something and then want it to go back and recut until the part qualifies, so we would go out and, you know, you're going to run, uh, there's two two sides to that. See, Kevin, I knew we were going to get into this part of it. <laughs> when you're running <laughs> subroutines, we, we can put a variable in that says, um, check parameter 120 and if it's intolerance skip running this subroutine or you know the original one if it's out of tolerance then we would adjust the wear compensation on that tool and rerun that subroutine now this has to be it can't be done in the there, there's two ways to run a G-code program, and it's one's sub based on subroutines, one's based on just long-handed code. Okay, and that's generally what 80% of operators run is just long-handed code. It's not subroutines. That we cannot go back and say, you know, we can't put a, a jump statement into long-handed code saying uh, check variable, you know, 120 if it's out of spec, go back, search through the entire program, look for tool two and run just tool two if tool two is doing more than one feature. So 
we can do what you're asking, but it does require a little bit more on the level of how you're running your machine. And it kind of looks if like you he's run it right now. What's that? It kind of he's writing right now, and it looks like he's kind of doing a lot of subroutines right now. Okay, if you're doing subroutines, yes, we can we can put the result of a probing operation and ask. You know, we'd have to write that in the actual code and say if var one is equal to you know your your max deviation, which would be your tolerance, then or if it's not equal to that, then we would rerun that subroutine, and we would rerun it as many times until it qual the probe qualifies that that boss is within spec. Now that being said, we also do put in a double check in there so that it can't more run more than a number of times because if something would happen like your end mill was chipped or something, and for some reason the probe is me is measuring wrong, it would keep rerunning that subroutine because it's going to keep trying to hit that dimension. And I've seen people do that to where okay, <laughs> adjust a thousand, now so runs it again. Adjust a thousand, runs it again. And if there's no loop detector in there, it just runs into infinity because it can't hit that tolerance. Like if you snap the tool off, it's going to keep cutting and keep cutting and keep cutting with that particular subroutine because the tool snapped off and it can't hit those numbers so it's just going to be caught in a loop. So that's where depending upon your skills with G-code and programming we get into a more of an advanced function of okay here's where I stored this data I want to loop this and I only want to loop it a maximum of 10 times. That would have to be hand coded into your G-code program. Or you know we can put a string in that allows you as a programmer to edit that and say, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to quantify this particular feature, and this is how I want to do it. This is where I'm going to store the information, and this is how many times I want it run. Um, the sky's kind of the limit with stuff like that. We can we can customize these probing routines to do a lot. You just have to tell us how you want to do it and what you want to do. So we might have to change your or bend your programming methods a little bit, but. Um, the sky's the limit with some of this stuff. I hope and, that answers your question. And Greg loves those challenges, right, Greg? Oh, yeah, they're great. Please <laughs> tell me tomorrow. <laughs> Especially going through that high nine uh, program. So, like, I mean, Greg is, is the one. So uh, if it, if it, <laughs> there's nothing that can't be done. To, yeah, a, well, certain, to yeah, a certain yeah. extent, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, but but to be honest with you, Greg, I mean, you know, I, I, I really, that explanation was perfect because, you know, that's the question that I get all the time uh, when people call me up and they say, well, you know, will, can I measure a part and then have it go back and then recut the part and then, you know, probe it again, make sure it's within tolerance. And, and I, I do understand that there are some nuances there. So, um, you know, again, I mean, it's, um, it's, like Greg said, if you're you can be very creative with G code and and things like that. So, but I think um, if you if you get a little bit deeper into that kind of stuff, then uh, you know yeah we we would refer you to Greg and and then um, you know hopefully we can uh, <laughs> we can have Greg address those those questions. Hmm. But it's uh, there's a lot of stuff there that you know I think can be done and um, you know it, particularly with like some of the newer uh, the you know the newer machines. And uh, you know, pass through pass through variables and stuff like that. I think we could probably address some of that. Well, and and you have to keep in mind that the probing routine you're applying. You know, people. We had the question in this session was, is probing our probing a replacement for CMM? Well, in this environment, you can't go back when you're on a CMM. You can't go back and recut the part. Sure. You can't expect our probing to behave like a CMM because if you want to do that functionality, we have to go back and actually, you have to remember that probe is an, a data acquisition tool. It's a tool. It's getting you information. What you do with that information is completely up to you. That's you can a great point. Offset. Yeah. Or, yeah, and then you, or you can go back and make machining decisions based upon that machine, that information, which you wouldn't be able to do when you're on a CMM. So it's different than that application of data acquisition than a CMM would be because we can we can go back and make decisions, run sections of programming, 
but it does require a little bit higher level of um, programmatic, programmatical decision making and you have to have it structured so that you can access those pieces of your G code program and to rerun them. So that's why I'm saying we can go back and 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 do like block skips over something. Let's just say we were going to cut a feature, we wanted to measure it and if it if it wasn't right, we wanted to dust cut it again or we wanted to address the tool offset and we wanted to do that programmatically we could put two other operations in there and say you know, we're programming them in. We're not rerunning. We're actually programming them into the G code. But at the decision point, we could say, you know, we, we go out and we probe that feature. We find out that the feature is within tolerance. We can, you know, type a simple block skip in for the next two operations because they don't need to be run. But they're automatically in the program. That's an easier method of doing this than trying to address a subroutine and and looking at a variable and deciding how many times a subroutine needs to run. So that requires a little bit more pre-thought and a little bit more programming than simply rerunning a subroutine. But it can be done because you're making, you're, you're preloading this with the decisions that you are going to recut things and then you're going to skip them if the condition doesn't exist where they need to be. Make sense? Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. No, it's yeah, and then the only, uh, just to finalize that, uh, Greg, um, uh, the only other question that came up during that discussion was, um, do I need to have a modular programming set up from the beginning? So I think I think you kind of talked about that. You just you have to kind of make the decision up front how you're going to program the part. Is that correct or, or right? And the the last point of how I what I was talking about about preloading operations that you could skip. We do not need that modular format for. It's a little extra programming because you're going to put those redundant paths in that you may elect to skip, but they would be in your program. Okay. So you're basically graphically making it modular by doing two additional paths on a critical feature that when you do the probe, if you know, we would take and say, go probe this feature and then would do a simple state, a while statement, or you know, a quantifying statement, and they're saying if parameter 120 is equal to whatever that feature is supposed to be, then jump ahead to line, you know, 800, so that you're skipping over, you know, 600 and 700, so you're not doing the redundant two cuts that you would normally have programmed in there to make sure that it was sized. Okay. So there, like I said, there, there's a, <laughs> there's always more than one way to skin a cat, and <laughs> we can do it, you know, with a subroutine. We can do it programmatically. There's a number of different ways we can work around these these issues. So to answer your question, <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> we don't need to have it modular, but we might have to get a, a little bit creative with how you program. Um, well. Yeah, and I, I think, um, you know, and there is a, there's an attendee here who's asking some very specific questions, and uh, uh, his name is Jeffrey, and uh, Jeffrey, let me assure you, we will, um, we, we will definitely uh, circle back with you uh, at some point this week to, uh, to, you know, to address these questions and, and make sure that you're getting uh, all of the feedback that you, that you need. So um, this is a great discussion. This is why we do this. And... So I'm very happy that you're asking the questions, and, and uh, you know we can have a discussion with Greg, and, and we can address this, um, you know, certainly more uh, after uh, after this presentation. So be happy to do that. But we do appreciate the questions. These are you know challenging, and you know we're we're geeky that way. We like these uh, we like these questions. So <laughs> and then Dave, who else would be sitting here at nine o'clock at night talking about Cam? Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. Really, seriously. <laughs> and then to answer your question, uh, James, um, doing the, the angle of that slot, basically that's what I just did right here. We're measuring the angle, um, and I can change that, that distance, um, you know, closer or farther apart to depending on my, on my angle of my, the, the point I want to take there. So definitely can do that measurement for you. All right. Any other questions on this part so far? All right, and get into, oops, let me close this one here. 
And our last part for the night, hopefully not everybody's not sleeping already. I don't hear any snoring. <laughs> yeah, that's because they're all on mute. Oh, wait, everybody's <laughs> muted, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so this part right here kind of goes to, like, doing a lot of measurement in here. A um, lot of different shapes, sizes. Um, and what we can do is, what I want to do is just kind of do a simulation here of what this looks like. Um, and let's do this one in Machine Sim here for you guys. I'll let it load up here. And uh, I think this was actually done on a Hermel machine. All right. We're pulling up our Machine Sim here. So now if you guys want to get, you know, super accurate with that Machine Sim, you guys can definitely bring that probe in here. And let me slow it down just a little bit here. Uh, one second here. For some reason, let me do a synchronize real quick. And okay. Get these calculated up real quick. And you, can, yeah, you know, and, and Kevin, while you're while you're doing that, I, I just wanted to let everybody know um, we um, there there actually is a uh, kind of a uh, a pre IMTS uh, promotion that we are doing. Uh, I, again, I don't want to turn this into a sales thing. You know, not at all. We're we're not a pressure sales organization uh, in any way at all. Um, but because of the fact that IMTS is coming up next month, um, we are kind of running some specials on on probing, and um, uh, so if you are interested in this and you want to see this a little bit more in depth, feel free to just give us a call, and uh, you know we'd be happy to kind of show you a little bit more of this, and and uh, you know there are some things that we can we can do for you as a uh, uh, a promotional event uh, for for IMTS. Absolutely. So now we got our machine sim going through, probing the outside of the part, getting some measurements on all those circles, bosses. You know, Jeffrey, you said you had lots of circles. Um, here's a kind of an example of doing a bunch of circles for you guys, uh, measuring those up. Um, and you can see as I'm going through my operation right here, um, you know, measuring angles, um, kind of basically everything that you can think about measuring uh, on the machine for you guys. So um, you know, every shape and size that I could think of put together here for you guys and just kind of see what it's doing here. Let's speed it up a little bit here. Doing the circles, little radiuses, and that's it. So, um, you know, you, you can see like on this specific radius right here, doing lots of, of, of hits. Can I get it so you guys can see it better? Lots of little hits just to measure out that radius, make sure that's a good radius uh, so when the part comes out the machine or even this internal one right here, um, you know, probing out our hole with a boss in the center. Um, so basically anything you guys can think of, the probe can do um, for you guys, taking, you know, just simple Z hits, checking the height of all our different, um, you know, um, mill offs right here. Uh, checking diameters, checking angles. Um, I know you were, uh, who was it, James, you were asking about the uh, the angle on the last part. Um, so we're measuring angles all along here. Um, this one right here, you can see we're taking a hit on the top, coming down and measuring the angle. So the sky's the limit on what you guys can do with this probe. Um, and you know, it, it, it's all to make your life easier and kind of get things going faster. So. You know, you guys maybe want to probe up a couple spots, machine the part, verify it real quick, doing a, you know, maybe X, Y, or a Z hit, or, you know, we're probing up the, the radius just to get a verification, make sure everything's good, and it keeps continuing on throughout the part, so. People aren't snoring. Well, that's good. <laughs> but... Um, that's about it uh, for the probing. Is there anything that you guys want to see? Um, anything you guys wanted to hear? Um, there's not much in probing for technology-wise. 
um, you know, like I said, just come in here and, you know, just hit your little scroll key, go up and down um, for your probing and, you know, you basically just chain your geometry like you do with milling um, and it's going to probe, you know, whatever, whatever chain you want there. And, um, you know, if I come into my, my tech one here, you can just see where those probe hits are actually going inside the, the bore right there. So, um, you know, definitely there's not much in there, but we've taken a lot of the work, made it easier. So for you guys on the front end, it's really quick and easy, but you know, the G code that you're seeing behind, oh, I don't have to post it up for this one, um, is all nice and simple for you guys to use. So, well, you know, I think, you know, uh, Kevin, one of the, you know, really one of the, the bigger points here that we should probably talk about is, you know, the fact that, that we're all here, um, you know, from 9 to 10 o'clock at night, um, and, and the people that, who are attending this are, are here kind of later, you know, this, obviously there's, a, there, there's an interest level here, and, you know, we don't do this just because we're bored and we need something to do. You know, we're, um, you know, we're always here for, uh, you know, for people to talk to. We have one of the best support staff uh, in, in the entire, you know, in, in the entire world. Of course, I'm biased, so I, I have to say that. But, uh, you know, but again, you know, Kevin, uh, he's always available. Greg's always available. If you have any questions on this at all, uh, just feel free to give us a call. I mean, you know, it's, it's not that we're too busy for anybody. We never, you know, we, we never are like that. Uh, we're, we're always willing to talk to anybody at any time. Uh, whether you are a solid cam customer customer or not, it, it doesn't matter. So, um, you know, we're we're very proud of what we do, and we've uh, we've built a great support staff. Uh, we've built a great sales staff. Uh, you know, again, just give us a call at any time. We you know we just we love talking about this stuff, and and um, you know again, there's there's just so much that we we can offer and. And uh, you know, again, it's it's just a you know, there's a lot of really cool, fun stuff to look at. And again, I suppose that makes me a little geeky, so I should probably start <laughs> stop talking about it. But <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it's it's um, you know, there's a lot of really fun stuff there. You know, Kevin talks about the fact that he's like, well, yeah, there's not much there. There's there's a lot there's a lot there, and it can really save you a lot of time and, and a lot of headaches. So absolutely. So Kevin, know. does this qualify as a solid cam demo? So do I get my hundred dollar gift card? Oh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Even did as you they did the demo and I didn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, you know, what? I, Greg, if, Greg, if you're going to get one, then I, I want, I want one too. I mean, okay. <laughs> I don't see any fine print on that ad. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's added. It's down. Can't, can't you see it down there in the hundred dollar bill? The, the fine print. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no, guys. Sorry. If, if, what you are know, the, uh, one of the questions that just came up, just real quick, guys, um, uh, we got a question. Uh, we have a Pacific Coast uh, individual here in the uh, as an attendee. So um, yeah, actually, there's. Um, I think we're our Pacific hours are. Uh, most of our hours are, are labeled as as Eastern time, but um, is it 9 a.m. Eastern time? I, I'm sorry, 9 p.m. I'm sorry, uh, Eastern time. Is that? Is that what we're currently doing uh, right now, Kevin? Yeah. Five five thirty Pacific, so five thirty, six thirty, seven thirty, eight thirty, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. So, Greg, um, it's funny. Were, were you just were you actually just counting that on your fingers? I just wanted to know if that was. <laughs> I don't have my webcam like on. Do I? <laughs> you guys are actually really trying to figure out time zones. <laughs> No, hey, you know, Kevin. Kevin said I was old, so I had to, you know, I had to give it back. Oh, to... uh, right. <laughs> so, yeah, we're here from, you know, Greg Payton works. Um, you know, he's over in California, um, and he he works for till five thirty at night his time. Um, you know, we have Justin over on the Mountain Time Zone. Sure. Um, so we have guys, you know, from, you know, seven in the morning um, Eastern time till. Uh, what do we say, 8.30 at night Eastern time. So definitely give us a call. And if you guys um, mm -hmm. you know, have a question, we do have the live chat too. So uh, even though that we might, or we might not be available, definitely shoot us an email. Or if you go to the website, there is the live chat option for you guys too. So 
Um, and there's people that follow Cam employees that work all around the world um, that take that live chat also. So I definitely, if no one, if it's an odd time of the day, email us. And if that, if you know, you don't get the answer right away, do the try the live chat also. But um, oh yeah, you know, and Kevin, that's that's a really great point, and I'm really glad you brought that up because that's always available, um, whether it's whether it's U.S. or European support. Um, that is that is 24/7 all the time. So. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Um, yeah, go to the website. You can always go there. You can. Uh, there's tons of information, and um, the, the other great thing that's that's really kind of cool about SolidCam, and, and it's um, it's something that we don't publicize, but it's an internal internal policy that we uh, kind of have. Is if you call us up and you know you don't get a call back right away, um, we we have sort of like an internal policy that says, you know, you'll get a call back within 20 minutes. And uh, obviously, depending on call volume and, you know, that sort of stuff, I mean, yeah, it's a little dependent upon that. But um, again, we, we have a, a tremendous support team. You know, we're, we're very, you know, very proud of the fact that uh, everybody's here in the U.S. You're not, you know, you're not getting a hold of a guy who's just looking for the answer in a, you know, in a, in a book somewhere. You know, all of our support staff are either programmers or machinists or a combination thereof. So, um, you know, you're talking to guys who are, you know, just very seasoned veterans uh, in terms of programming and machining, probing, fixturing, tooling. Uh, you know, this is a, a very seasoned organization. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's something that we're, we're very proud of. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I had this flyer up, but, you know, like I said, the, the Telefriend program, um, you just give us a name and a phone number, and they get in a demo. Uh, and normally, you guys just get $50, but if you just tell them the KevCam special, you guys will actually get $100. So, And then if they do purchase, you guys get 20% of that sale. So um, it's a really great plan, and people are making a lot of money off those. So um, definitely, you guys have a friend or a buddy down the street that... Uh, um, is using cam software and just give us a name and phone number and we'll take care of the rest and we'll just send you a hundred dollar gift card no strings attached unless you're a solid cam employee <laughs> <laughs> you I was gonna say already down the street though I think I could find it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was gonna say guys I mean you know yeah I, I don't know about you but I I don't see I don't see a penny from that so. <laughs> but it's okay it's okay. <laughs> no, and you know, if you guys have, uh, if there is no other questions, um, you know, if you guys run across something, you guys do have a question down the line, you guys have my email address. Um, definitely give us a call or shoot me an email. Um, or if you want to call the support line, and that number is 866-975-1115, extension 2. Um, and we'll get you a handle there. But uh, what I'll do is we'll end the, the uh, webinar now and, uh, in a couple hours, it'll be actually uploaded onto the YouTube website um, or the Solid Cam University channel right here. So you, if you guys want to replay it or kind of rewatch it for the tips and tricks and stuff like that, definitely come to the, uh, the YouTube channel and uh, watch it a little bit later on. It should be on about 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. It'll be uploaded. So, um, But if you guys don't have any other questions, we'll call it the night and uh, thanks again for taking the time out of your night especially on a nice summer day and uh, when you guys can, I'm sure be doing much better things than listen to me ramble and Brendan ramble and uh, Greg ramble on all night for you guys but um, <laughs> no, definitely appreciate the time and uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the future classes all right guys Great. have a wonderful night thanks a lot thanks, take care guys.